Eyes, Connie Chung. <laughs> Saturday Night Live has been home to many comedy legends, but few have made an impact quite like Jane Curtin. As one of the original cast members of this celebrated show, she's been at the heart of laughter and innovation for over 50 years. For the first time ever, Curtin is ready to confirm what many have long speculated, sharing insights into infamous events like the fight between Chevy Chase and Bill Murray, her bonds with icons like John Belushi and Lorne Michaels, and more. Facts First presents Jane Curtin confirms the rumors of her SNL co-star 50 years later. Curtin steered clear of John Belushi. Jane's time on SNL wasn't without its share of trials. In recent interviews, Curtin, now age 75, has opened up about some of the memories that cast a shadow over her experience, particularly with one co-star, the late John Belushi. While Curtin has acknowledged getting along with most of the cast, she couldn't ignore the glaring problems she faced with Belushi. The difficulties, she explained, talking to People magazine weren't personal. They were mostly connected to Belushi's battle with addiction, a struggle that eventually led to his untimely death at age 33. John wasn't John, he was an addict, Curtin revealed. This darkness behind the scenes was something Curtin did her best to steer clear from. After all, she was primarily focused on her career and the life she enjoyed with her family, away from the show's partying atmosphere. Belushi's capacity to party was legendary, but Curtin observed the dire toll it took on him and others. Quote, John, obviously, he could party with the best of them. But the next day, these guys were so miserable, she said. For Curtin, the thrilling 90-minute live show was enough excitement. Everything else seemed self-indulgent and challenging. Interestingly, her reflections on her time at SNL also extended to watching the show again. With almost 50 years between her and the original episodes, she found them lacking humor. That really wasn't a very good show. It was terrible, she exclaimed in a recent interview. Regardless, she still holds fond memories of some sketches like Dan Aykroyd's uproarious basimatic bit, which she says still manages to make her laugh. She fought with Lorne Michaels. Jane's tenure at SNL was marked by creativity, laughter, and many memorable moments. But behind the scenes, tensions brewed, particularly between Curtin and the show's creator, Lorne Michaels. During a candid 2018 interview on Watch What Happens Live with Andy Cohen, Curtin opened up about her complex relationship with Michaels, revealing some of the underlying friction that characterized their working relationship. The disagreements apparently reached a tipping point over John Belushi's increasingly concerning behavior and drug use. Curtin, worried for Belushi's well-being, approached Michaels for help, saying, quote, you've got to do something, this guy is going to die. Michaels' dismissive response led to a breakdown in communication between the two, and they stopped talking altogether. The rift became so pronounced that cast member Gilda Radner reportedly served as a go-between, passing messages between Curtin and Michaels. Despite the clash, time seems to have healed some wounds. The SNL 40th anniversary party served as a turning point in their relationship. Curtin was profoundly grateful to Michaels for allowing the event to happen even going so far as to thank him personally. The event was more than just a celebration. It symbolized a gesture of goodwill that meant a lot to the older cast members who no doubt shared more than a few fond memories together. Reflecting on Michael's actions, Curtin said, So Lorne was nice enough to do that for us, and I appreciate it tremendously. It meant so much to everybody who was there. It was great. It was one of the best nights ever. More behind-the-scenes secrets Jane Curtin's insights into the world of comedy and her time on SNL were further revealed in a June 2019 interview with The Hollywood Reporter, providing a rare glimpse at the inner workings of the industry both then and now. During her early years at SNL, Curtin found her strength in playing the straight person, comfortable looking into the camera without feeling threatened. Her ambition was simple, desiring only to contribute one thing to each show and not having to fight for material. An era marked by drugs, misogyny, and a lack of awareness of cultural appropriation, Curtin's reflections in that interview painted a vivid picture of the time. She recalled the blatant sexism in SNL, contrasting it with the equal treatment she received in her improv group from Cambridge, Massachusetts. 
The dismissal of the Equal Rights Amendment was shocking to her, as it showed the lack of evolution in the culture at that time. Her experience on Kate and Allie opened her eyes to the power of relatable storytelling. Feedback from divorced men and women made her realize the impact the show was having on people's lives. This acknowledgement shifted her perception of the show from being hokey to something meaningful and affirming. Whether reflecting on past sexist jokes, moments of cultural insensitivity, or the current divide in the country, Curtin's candid revelations about the industry provided valuable insight into the changes, challenges, and lingering issues that persisted in comedy and entertainment as a whole. The Bill Murray Chevy Chase Drama SNL has been on the air for nearly 50 years, and it's had its fair share of behind-the-scenes woes. But according to Jane Curtin and Lorraine Newman, who were both part of SNL's inaugural cast, one of the worst fights in the history of the show was in those early years. Curtin and Newman appeared on an episode of the talk program Watch What Happens Live in 2018, discussing all things SNL with host Andy Cohen. The conversation took a serious turn when a fan phoned in to inquire about a notorious 1978 fight between Chevy Chase and Bill Murray that Newman, Curtin, and Gilda Radner were there to witness. The brawl was described by Newman as very sad and painful and awful. A Clash of Two Bull Moose The tension between Bill Murray and Chevy Chase began to escalate when Chase, who had left SNL in February of 1978 on apparently not such excellent terms, returned later that year to guest host. Evidently, some regular cast members were not pleased to see Chase coming back in the coveted star spot. Curtin described the atmosphere as resembling a tense family gathering, telling the audience that the situation was uncomfortable. While most of the cast chose to let the tension simmer just below the surface, Bill Murray, who had been lassoed onto SNL to replace Chase, confronted it head on. Quote, These were two bull moose going at each other, so the testosterone was surging, and stuff happens, Curtin shared. Newman added insight into the painful exchange, noting that both individuals knew exactly what to say to hurt each other the most. The physical fight, involving even Belushi at one point, ended up in Belushi's dressing room and was short-lived but the harsh words exchanged and the emotions behind them left an enduring mark. Murray and Chase have somewhat made up Years later, Murray and Chase worked together in the hit movie Caddyshack, and the relationship continued to improve gradually. In various interviews, both comedians have reflected on the fight, with Chase partially blaming Belushi for instigating the feud and Murray describing the incident as a Hollywood fight, a don't-touch-my-face kind of thing. Over time, their relationship has mellowed, with Chase even admitting in a 2008 interview with Howard Stern that they had become very friendly and often played golf together. The revelations by Jane Curtin about the backstage world of SNL have certainly shed new light on the dynamics of those years. Now it's time to hear from you. What did you find most surprising about Jane Curtin's recollections? Let us know in the comments section below.